Good morning, everybody. I am Lauren Cohen, international legal and real estate expert, and recently coined the cross-border catalyst. I am also known as the Canadian Whisperer, and I am the host of this lovely podcast, Investing Across Borders, to which I'm very happy you're listening today. I am here with my guest, my friend, Trisha Ben, who happens to be from Canada and looked at my background and was pretty excited because it has a Canadian and American flag, but the Canadian flag is a little dominant. And Trisha and I met, I want to say about three years ago, Trisha, does that sound about right? And I don't even remember how we met, but we instantly, as most Canadian girls do, instantly bonded and just kept chatting. Now it's taken us a half hour since we signed into Zoom to actually start doing this podcast because we just had to do a little catch up and we just to have that tendency. We're both extremely driven to help others. And that's part of what I love about Trisha. Trisha runs C-Suite Network, which is an amazing organization that helps C-level entrepreneurs run their businesses, grow their businesses, collaborate with others, learn and, and grow and everything along those lines. Trisha, please say hello and tell us a little bit about yourself. Good morning, Lauren. I, well, I'm so thrilled to be here, and I don't know. I mean, the way you introduced me, I don't know if I need to say very much. But I'm, <laughs> I'm very, I'm very honored to be both a Canadian and American citizen. And you only became American a few months ago, right? Right, right, right after COVID started. So, yeah. oh, about uh, a year, okay. Three, four months in, yeah. So yeah. I have to, have to look at when my one year anniversary is. It'll be coming up. Um, so I'm very, very honored to be a citizen of both countries, as you know, Lauren, and and um, and and to see how uh, we can create opportunities across the borders and appreciate the two cultures and um, and really help people navigate because it, it's it's interesting the differences and then of course the similarities. Yeah, the differences and the similarities are are really incredible because people think you'll you'll know this. People think, oh, you're from Canada, it's no big deal. Or because we're not a noticeable immigrant, or because we don't say that many words that are different other than sorry, which you still say the Canadian way, or process or project, which I can't even um I can't even say anymore because it's been drilled out of me. So when I go home which I haven't done in 17 months. Not that I'm counting, right? Isn't that strange? I, this is the longest, I'm, I'm turning 50 this year and it's the longest I've ever been away from home. <laughs> Me too, same deal. And I'm a little older than you, but either way, the fact is that it's just, it just it, it, as you said the other day or the other minute, it sucks. Mm -hmm. And it definitely has had a huge impact, this whole COVID on, on my business, on our business, on the way we do business on, I mean, you had to do a complete about face. So what I'd love you to do, since I only gave it a little bit of a uh, inter introduction, tell us a brief summary of what is C-Suite, what is your role with C-Suite, and what did C-Suite do to pivot? So there's a lot there. So C-Suite Network, I think the simplest way to think about it is essentially just a platform that's focused on executives, business owners, investors, and influencers. And really just the brand promise is we're going to accelerate your success. So what does an executive business owner, influencer, investor need to succeed? Well, they need, they need networking and connection. They need community. They need um, all the tools, you know, products and services in their business lines to make them successful. And they need a way to be able to distribute that content out into decision makers and so on. So, so the C-suite network, we are a media group. We're a networking group. Uh, we're a professional services group. And, and most of all, I'd say we're a, a, a group that's very much a values-led organization. So yeah. I know, Lauren, you, every single community meeting we have, I'll always share, uh, you know, our relevancy, reach, reciprocity. And with the last year, I've added the fourth R, respect. So relevancy, we're focused on how do we create, you know, really meaningful connection with each other, not just throwing, you know, I've got this service, buy it, um, but literally, literally, how do we help each other? Um, the the uh, reach is about, you know, great people come from great people. I, don't, I can't remember how we met either, but, all, you know, it was some great person <laughs> without doubt, because that that's how you meet people where you form that meaningful connection, you know, and then reciprocity. Obviously, there's always an ask um, uh, and, and acting like there shouldn't be is ridiculous. Right. We all have asked. We're working through business challenges. And when you're working through them as quickly as you possibly can. 
Last year is a great example where none of us could move quickly enough. There's always got to be, and that the ask is going to be there, no question, but there's always got to be a give, right? right. So what is your give? And, and that makes a really vibrant, great community of, you don't just come in and take, you also give. And that means there's tons to give. And then the respect, I added that one in because it was implicit with us. Um, but with all the issues we had over the last year, respect and, and really, you know, giving voice to it uh, as, as, a, as, as a critical principle um, became important. And respect is about who we are and you give respect. Trust is something you earn. Right. Right. So, so um, being very principle driven. So anyway, so with all of that kind of overlay, we do have, you know, the largest business radio podcast platform, uh, uh, Lauren, uh, you know that, and then, and then uh, TV, and we have uh, our digital content, our, and then we're in constant, you know, upgrading and all kinds of things happening with our website and uh, more traffic and search engine optimization, all of that. Uh, we have our professional services for marketing, sales conversion, all the things that we've learned about how to sell into the executive or decision-making audiences. Uh, we have that in our professional services. And then, of course, we run now over 300 digital meetings a year. So last year was just a tremendous year. And I'm happy to go into you know, more detail about how we really transformed our business and, um, and how exciting that has been and where we're going now. Um, in terms of me, my responsibilities, I, I am a true Canadian American in terms of my career. Uh, you know, I've always been part of enterprise-sized organizations, um, always building new businesses or integrating businesses, and um, and uh, and I just love it. I love focusing on building great teams with individuals that understand how important they are and, and everybody aligned in terms of the mission of what we want to achieve together. And so, um, you know, I've been very honored to be across the board, uh, the border, I should say, um, yeah. you know, with, with um, Ipsos, which was a, a company that was founded by Angus Reid, uh, one of the most famous names in, uh, in, in, uh, in Canada, of course. And um, that became Ipsos. And I went down to Washington, D.C., you know, after being in Toronto and Ottawa um, as vice president of public affairs. Where did you grow up, in Toronto or Ottawa? I forget. Guelph. Oh, Guelph, um, right. I, yeah, I, I, and I lived in Toronto and Ottawa. Well, uh, just but, FYI, I'm like, oh, yeah, Guelph, of course. Well, Guelph is about an hour outside of Toronto, and it's a smaller town. But what it's famous for is it's probably the biggest veterinary university in Canada, right? Like yes. the University of Guelph is folk, yeah. And um, there's a lot of, uh, right now, <laughs> it used to be like people would go to Guelph to get away from the prices in Toronto. Now yeah. the prices in Guelph are like the prices in Toronto used to be for a really long time. It's crazy. And Hamilton and, and Sarnia, like everywhere, the prices have gone literally Durham region out of control. So yes. the whole GTA and basically the whole of Ontario is insane. So, so Patricia is not a big city girl like me, although I kind of grew up in the suburbs. She's a small town girl, but now, and now you're out just outside of Pittsburgh, right? I am, yes. Like it's so like a twin, a twin <laughs> city almost, right? Because it's Midwest mentality, community yeah. oriented, people look after each other, which is naturally who you are. Yeah. So. And I think that the, I remember when we originally talked about all kinds of different things that were going on at C-Suite and I was not at the time ready to make the move over. I wanted to, but I just, there was so much, so much going on when you pivoted for COVID and, and adjusted the business model and made it so open and available to everybody kind of really in, in embracing everybody and bringing them into the fold. I think that that opened the doors and made for me and, and many others that were, that I found moving into your network at the same time, just uh, much more available. Yes. Yes. It, it, it was so incredible. I mean, March 13th to March 16th, we went from being a very high touch, very high level uh, cost and engagement membership. Uh, model. And, and we had other pieces that were pretty early days. Um, some of our councils are 
our hero club, our thought council, um, our podcast network, you know, um, but, but the primary uh, driver of our revenue in our business model was our uh, high level memberships. And, you know, we were on the road hosting events all over yeah. North America. Uh, I, I was on the road at least 40, some part of 40 weeks a year. So, you know, and then March 16th, not anymore. No. And, and, you know, Lauren, we were talking about celebrates and that that whole thing of, you know, that the event that we do on Friday evenings at five o'clock Eastern, that actually was the very first uh, step toward completely opening up. And what that was, was on March 16th, we had the immediate, okay, um, my business partner is Jeffrey Hazlett, former CMO of Eastman Kodak, founder of C-Suite Network. And he said, okay, we're going to drive and thrive. Okay, that's our mandate. No matter what, we're going to drive and thrive. We're not first responders from a healthcare perspective, right. but we are definitely first responders. And we've got all these incredible leaders that are looking to us to say, how do we manage this? Yeah. How do we navigate it's, what's happening? It's been tough. Yes. For so everybody at every level, from small, small, small business, sometimes the smaller the business, the easier the adjustment to big business like cruise lines and huge mega businesses that have been so impacted by the, by this and, and events like mm -hmm. events just changed. And, you know, I'm, I mentioned to you that I'm in the process of um, becoming more of a paid speaker. And part, part of that process is you can be paid to speak on a virtual stage just as much as you can on a physical stage. Now for yeah. me as a single mom, this actually opened doors so that I'm, mm -hmm speaking on stages generally once a week, at least, if not more. And yeah. it, and I couldn't do that if I had to travel for 40 weeks a year, because I wouldn't be able to travel 40 weeks a year. It just, it's not physically possible for me. Yes. It, you know, I think so much opportunity has been created. And my, my whole thing with- If you were open to it, Tricia, if you if were open, open to it. Because a lot of people shut down and said, I'm done. This is, I'm defeated, I'm done. If you had an open mind and your mind, it's all about mindset, right? And if your yeah. mindset was giving, because you have to be a giver and mm -hmm. givers create relationships. And this to me, the whole thing about, uh, um, about COVID and even cross border, it's like, are, are you a giver? You know, Canadians are, Canadians and Americans are different and Americans kind of had more of a closed mind, but mm -hmm. now they've opened a little because they realize the world is small. And, yeah. and we have to be more accepting. Well, and I think also we've, we've seen really that, um, and, and it's so interesting, the differences, and then also, of course, the perception of differences. When you've yeah. lived in the U.S., you know, I've been here now for a few years. So, you know, it's different when you're living in the country versus when you're part of the country. Um, so, you know, that that kind of cultural approach of protecting everyone versus my own individual rights, that was definitely a thing. Yeah. But the but the interesting thing in the C-suite network is what I what I see is tremendous leaders who care so much about their constituencies, whatever their communities are, their employees, their families, their, you know, the, the, the larger community that they live in um, and that they serve. And, and so, you know, when you're able to galvanize like-minded people together, oh my goodness, the strength in that, you know, so, so we're going to drive and thrive. Okay. How do we help each other? And we, ha we set up, so our immediate thing was we're going to keep everything. So we didn't cancel anything. No, uh, we just moved everything online. <laughs> so we had a huge event coming up in April. And, that, you know, that was March 16th. Yeah. We had a huge in-person event, Virginia Beach. We yeah. had a ship. We had all kinds of things we were a supposed ship. to be doing. Even better, a ship. <laughs> yeah, in person, you know. And so uh, what we did was we moved that all virtual. We had tremendous feedback, experience, engagement. It was amazing. And so the whole thing has been how do we learn as quickly as possible? With Celebrates, it was, oh, my goodness. We have $10,000 plus memberships and COVID just happened. Nobody's looking to spend an extra $10,000. Nobody knows what's happening right now. And everybody's clamping down on, you know, spending. So what do we, what do we need to do? And so, you know, I lead um, uh, our sales team. My challenge to them was to say, okay, we've gone and we've done a very intense one-to-one -one, really highly engaged membership grouping and sale process. Yeah. How do we now go to one to many? So this is what I did, Lauren. I said, okay, it's Monday morning. Whoever you're talking to, I don't care who it is. 
ask them if they can join us on Wednesday night at eight o'clock. And I don't care if we have two people, 10 people, I mean, whatever we have, let's run through. What would we do? What, what is it that we can now deliver now that we're digital? Yeah, and yeah. so we did this meeting on, on a Wednesday night. We had two people and it was terrible, Lauren. <laughs> it was terrible. I was not one of the two. You were not one of the two because I can, oh, I can guarantee that because those two still have not joined the C-suite. Really? Um, <laughs> that's, that's funny. No joke. And I share this story now because what happened was, and this is a really critical model that I share with my team almost every day. We are scaling. And if, if, uh, if you can't see my hands right now, I have my two palms together and I'm going in a direct upward angle, right? We have to scale fast growth. There's just no way to work around that. And especially with what happened uh, in terms of our business model. So how do we do that? The only way you can do that is to have your innovation. So your, your, your bottom hand, you need to have that pulling up. You need the innovation coming and you need your infrastructure, which is the second hand filling in what, you, right. what works, right? And let the other stuff drop. And so everybody gets into this mindset and it's not just through the COVID era. It's, it's in all business. You get in this mindset, heaven forbid we make a mistake and large size organizations. Oh my goodness. It's almost crippling that, that, that sentiment is just horrendous. I, that's one, I uh, can't stand that. I mean, it leads to inaction, which is the worst. <laughs> so, so, you know, you innovate what you, what works, you keep what doesn't work. You drop immediately. It's not some big failure. It's not some big mistake. It's information and you keep moving on. And if you can arm your team around that, create the culture that supports that attitude, it is extraordinary. So what ended up happening was we regrouped immediately after that session and we formed Celebrates. Now, Lauren, just to give some perspective, that Friday evening event for us is the biggest galvanizer of our community. It's the biggest delivery of connectivity across the whole entire platform of all the different I'm gonna types. I'm going to stop you for a moment because I'd like to share what it is. Yeah. So at 5 p.m. every Friday, they, the C-Suite Network has a, basically, a. it's called Celebrate. And it's basically to appreciate your week. Most people come with a glass of wine. Mm -hmm. Trisha what? loves wine, by the way, just saying. <laughs> um, she always has red. I've never seen her without a red, without red, except for this morning, because 9 a.m. would be a little early. But anyway, I'm sorry if that was, that was, wine is important. I don't drink wine. There you go, coffee probably, right? <laughs> I'm, I, I need coffee. I don't drink wine. Unfortunately, I get migraines. But if I drank wine, believe me, I would be right there with you. But it's, it's great because the week is over and you go and you share, I, you share your wins, you mm -hmm. share your successes. Um, you get to break out into little networking sessions. There's no extra cost. It's part of your membership. You come, you go as you please. Yeah. There's no formal agenda. They introduce some new members each yeah. time so that you can get to know them. And um, it's just, it's a great opportunity to get to know some people. It, it really is. And just, um, you know, the, the initial, uh, we now just call it Celebrates to short form it. But the initial title of it was Permission to Push Pause. And it was just that whole notion of if we could just push a pause button as decision makers, right. as people who are running our businesses and going through whatever crises, and there's always something. COVID, obviously, we all went through it at the same time, but there's always something when you're building there businesses, is always something. building teams and so on, always. Yeah. So the pause button, you know, when you can arm yourself with great people and be positive, uh, we all got tough decisions, park it. We're going to focus on all the great things. And then, and then ironically, the fact of the matter is when somebody is feeling down or they've had a week where they've been beat up for whatever reason, personally or professionally, um, my promise on Friday nights is to stay until everyone's been heard. And so those things that- how, really, how, What's the latest you've stayed? Uh, I think the latest I've stayed is probably eight o'clock-ish. Wow. Yep. Um, and, and it's because something really meaningful was happening for someone. We, we had- we've had everything and and it's um to have an environment where there's enough trust and uh support where it's not uh it's not an artificial connection it's a mm -hmm. real connection and that's the other thing is lauren i know you know this everybody's videos on 
because I want to see everyone. And I tease them like I, I know their voices now because you can't see all everyone's picture at the same time. You know? So, you know, like if you're speaking, I know that, that's, oh, yeah, you know, it's me. There's no and, question. And I'm able to pick on you, you know, and 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 so there's the you know, real full engagement and that kind of embrace of like, look, let's celebrate the great things. What do we have to come up with? And then and then this weekend, make sure you're taking care of yourself. And there's a community here that cares about you and celebrating those things. And so, um, yeah, so, so, um, you know, fast forward, we went from what could have been like, well, that was horrendous to the best event we've ever had in all of our history, whether it's digital or live events. Isn't that amazing? And it didn't cost thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars and have people traveling and all this logistics. It's like, yeah, th th that's the beauty of this is that as much as I am zoomed out, there's no question we all are. My eyes are exhausted by the end of the day. Last night I was on Zoom until after 10. And finally I said, because I was on with Hawaii and Vancouver, I finally said, I'm sorry, I'm done. Whatever okay. needs to happen can happen another day. We're, we're, I'm done, I can't do this anymore. And I was not even on the video because I just couldn't do it anymore. But yeah. the reality is for a lot of event planning oriented companies, a lot of people that do trade shows or run those events, I think that at first it was super hard. No question, because they that's where the money came from. But now, now you have that kind of shift where if you did open, up mm -hmm. i don't mean open i mean open yourself yep. and and you know i'm c-suite is about this and i'm certainly about joint ventures and collaboration and collaborating if you are a collaborator rather than a competitor you will come out of this thing all the better because oh. you've made relationships nobody was able to meet in person and touch elbows and, and and bellies and all of this so the relationships i think that we've built over this time like i mean mm -hmm. I feel like an isolationist, which I'm not, you, you are not either. You're, you know, I'm an extrovert, no question, but I'm, I'm much more introverted now, but it's okay. Yeah. Like my, yeah. friend, my friend, a colleague, a lawyer here said, can you have lunch in person? And you know, Florida is open. So I'm like, okay, I'll have lunch yeah. in person, you know? And, and it's kind of like, it's, it's strange. We all are, we're a little, I'm a little nervous. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, you do. You do have to, you do have to be careful. You have to use caution and, um, but, but the connectivity, I, I cannot agree with you more, Lauren, as you know, I mean, when you collaborate and this is where I can't understand the mentality. Now I was a competitive figure skater. I get competing. You were? Oh, I would oh, yeah. love to see videos of that. I, I trained at the Olympic training center in Canada, you know, so, wow. so, so yeah. So I didn't so, know uh, that. Oh yeah. I understand competition. I get it. Right. But the fact of the matter is that competition and what people don't understand, it's not about beating the other person. It's truly about how you perform at your best. Right. And and then and then strategically, can you come out ahead in, the, in the, that, you know, depending on which sport it is. Um, but uh, but when you look at business and the collaborative power, it's like, OK, so you're going to fight with one competitor over this piece of pie why on earth wouldn't you make it this piece of pie? You know, like, like I just, I can't fathom not wanting to make things bigger, better, more profitable, more beneficial, more impactful. And, and that's another thing that's just inherent in our culture. You know, we have people where, uh, you know, you look at them and you'd say, well, don't they compete? Well, actually in our group, they collaborate, they help each other, they share what they're doing that's working, what's not working. It's extraordinary. And, and, um, and therefore it just means that every single person that comes in, there's that whole uh, appreciation that just adds more, right? You, you, Lauren, you can't do work with every single person in the world that oh, needs God, services, no. right? But collaborating with somebody where it's like, ah, oh, that's your expertise, perfect, you know? Absolutely. Or, you know, this morning we were just talking about a new council we're going to be launching in the in the um, financial slash real estate space. Perfect. Right. Because there are going to be people there that were, are going to be amazing collaborative partners like Claudia Harvey and Craig Dunkley, like all all great things. Again, great people. And by the way, uh, great Canadians that also operate in the so US. Let's <laughs> talk a little about that. So we'll go back to that. And by the way, I wanted to ask you, do you know, I should I probably, sh well, Nancy Matthews has been a guest on my podcast. She's a dear friend. Do you know Nancy? 
I, do you know I know a Nancy oh, Na- Nancy Matthews which which so means Nancy, you would know Nancy Matthews okay. she goes by fancy Nancy she's known as the visionary with guts and if you do not know Nancy Matthews you okay. will now know Nancy Matthews okay. Nancy wrote a book called the one and the one philosophy and she now has a sequel to the one philosophy and the one philosophy and you will agree with this so much is all about and I love women's prosperity network I helped them get their first trademark I've been around with them forever the, the one philosophy is all about you just never know who that one might be. It could be the janitor. It could be the barista at Starbucks. It mm-hmm. could be whomever. You have to treat everybody as if they're the one and come from a place of giving. And Nancy is just incredible at that. She yeah. uh, mm-hmm. she collaborates with the um, eWomen Network, uh, Sandra, I can't remember her last name, uh, quite often. And mm-hmm. Nancy also, one of the things that that they do at uh, Women's Prosperity Network is they talk about coopetition rather than competition. And I love that word and about bringing other women up with them. It's funny because yesterday I was talking about my ideal avatar for my business and, and the guy was like, well, is it a woman or a man? I said, well, I have a lot of female and a lot of male. He goes, but you have to choose. I go, well, obviously it's a woman because I'm gonna resonate with them and I'm gonna help them. You know, this woman I'm talking to from Montreal, it's it's her I'm helping yes her partner I'm going to help by virtue of doing that but the, women helping women is so important and that's another thing you have a lot of women driven st- stuff and events and programs and education going on because at the end of the day um, women are more more collaborative by nature it's just our nature to be that way I think um, and I wanted to ask you when you Okay, and I don't know the answer to this, so forgive me. You mm-hmm. got married and then got a green card, and that's, or did you come in with a visa? How did you? So I did both. Um, I came in as an expert. So uh, when I was uh, 32, I was made a vice president in North America for Ipsos, and I went to Washington, D.C., and that was my first experience with fully integrating a new business and completely rebuilding it and all of its infrastructure and processes. So, um, so that I came in as an expert um, uh, 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 individual and I wasn't married at that time. So, so I came in that way for that job. Then I went back to Canada. Um, I was a senior director at Rogers and built a whole new um, communications just Rogers communication yeah Rogers. We got to communicate, you know, we have to translate for the American and right. other audiences <laughs> that are listening. Right. So Rogers, well, Rogers uh, Communications is over well over a $20 billion company owns, you know, as you well know, Lauren, real estate, it has its own bank. Like Comcast, but in Canada. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, And I sat within the media company. So I worked with all of the media leaders, publishers, editors, sales, um, and and all of the leaders of the business units and built a multi-million dollar uh, insights practice. So it had traditionally been when you were less than 40. Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> yes. Just saying. Um, yep. And she and, had a young child at the time. Or, right? Yes, I, I had my first uh, in uh, two years after starting that uh, business. Um, and it was really one of those things of uh, start something completely from scratch and completely uh, the first. There, there was no one in Canada uh, that was monetizing against audiences um, at, on the client side. So I, I came from the traditional market research supplier side, right? And I created a revenue generating stream internally to Rogers Media, which, as I said, uh, at that time, that was so uh, out of the norm. Now, of course, uh, mm-hmm. selling data, selling insights, creating any, um, a- any awareness around that and all kinds of different products and services is, is very much the norm. But back then, that was not done. You were a trailblazer. Yes, absolutely. And then I took on, uh, and, and oh my goodness, Lauren, you know, Miles Nadell, right? I do. Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. So, um, so Miles Nadell is a great Canadian business leader that most don't know, which is shocking to me because he built well over a $3 billion conglomerate of, um, um, agencies, um, within the MDC partners holding company. And um, he came out of Toronto and uh, we had offices also in New York. So I took on a global chief marketing and strategy officer role 
uh, within MDC Partners and I have PL responsibilities for one of our New York businesses. This woman is a little bit like experienced and a little bit uh, of an expert in many things and she's got a pedigree and a, I mean, what a resume. There's it, nobody it, that would say no to you for any position anywhere. Like look at all of these, <laughs> just dropping names, like, you know, whatever, no big deal. Uh, yeah, well, it, it you know, uh, uh, it's funny when you look back, I don't look back. So when you say that, I'm like, oh, that was before. <laughs> I always point to the top corner of my office, the furthest corner in my office, because it's like, that's where I'm going now. And I'm so focused on that. So um, with this, right? With this. Uh, yeah, this, this, I use a lot of really simple um, frameworks like that for, for, for the team. And also obviously a share in our community, because a lot of times, things uh, concepts are so complicated for people uh it's like you know what you need a you need a a doctorate to understand what we're trying to achieve no we you know and and you know we did our strat planning this year every single person on my team knows what the top three goals are for our whole organization and then they know every objective that's delivered below that who's responsible for it who's on the team and what the timeline is for that's it beautiful you know? yeah just just keep things simple clarity um, and, and bring everybody on that journey. So anyway, yeah. So I, so, uh, when I came back the second time, um, I did, uh, get married in it when I was in Canada, my husband was in Canada with me for several years. So he became a Canadian citizen as well. And then, um, and then when we came back to the U S in that role with MDC partners, I then, uh, applied for the green card through, uh, my marital status, just cause that was the simplest, uh, way Definitely. to do that. always the easiest yes yeah. so I did the professional I did actually do the professional visa to come into the country but then I started the marital green card process so so one of the things I quickly want to address because we our time is of course up because we could talk for three hours about all of the amazing things that Trisha has done and will continue to do and that we will do together and uh, the beauty of this is that it actually brings us closer together as well by doing this podcast and really getting to know my guests on a different level, some of whom I'm closer with than others, but all of whom are, I deeply respect, um, is I wanted to talk a little bit about what your thoughts are. And I know we talked about this at the very beginning about this, this visa and the process and the, the beauty of having a visa in your back pocket, especially when we're facing all of the lockdown that all of our Canadian people, all of our Canadian family and friends have been, especially in Ontario, suffering through for this whole time. I mean, I think Toronto was on day 300 and I don't even know of lockdown and they it, they just extended it yet again. And, um, and the rest, I mean, the restaurants have been closed. Like how do pe people survive the mental health? It's, it's terrible. And so one of the things that's happened in my business and has happened in yours as well, as you know, you work with a lot of international clients is the realization that we need options. Mm -hmm. And the thing that money buys is never going to be happiness, but it's going to be options. And then options and flexibility in turn can buy happiness, not buy, but help you achieve happiness. It's, it's like financial freedom and flexibility is freedom. So just yeah. tell me a little bit about your experience. And I wanted to talk briefly about value because value, not values, although values and value are closely intertwined, but value because a lot of clients, a lot of people are still focused on price and price does not equal value ever. And so I just briefly would love to touch on those things if you could. Absolutely. So um, first, you know, for as as we well know, um, our our family and friends and community in Canada, it has been incredibly challenging. And I am a uh, hundred percent with you, Lauren. That you know, if you can create flexibility, if you can create options, opportunities, it's so important. So to have that visa in your pocket, you know, for for you and I, we haven't been back to Canada for so long. But the fact of the matter is, if we really wanted to go because we have our passport, right, we can go. It's just to it's just challenging, but we can go. Exactly. There's a there, there. It's it's not the way it was, and we'd have to make a lot of allowances in terms of quarantining and all that kind of stuff. Um, but we could technically go, and there's a lot to be said for that. So I know I, I have calm. I know you do. Like if something really bad happened with my family, I can get there. 
Yes. Right. Yeah. And and that's actually that really spurred me on for my American citizenship because my my children are Canadian and American. Of course, right. Mm -hmm. So having them here, my my initial thinking about getting my green card was I do not ever want to be stuck somewhere where I can't get to my children. Mm -hmm. Right. And it's the same thing with our businesses. It's the same thing with our friends and our communities we serve, you know, across borders. So that flexibility to me is just a, a you know, absolutely no question. Um, and and so being able to work with someone like you, Lauren, because I even though I've been through the process three times in various ways, I, I am no expert. <laughs> so being able to work with someone like you to make that happen and understand what needs to happen when it needs to happen and not be worried about it. And that's a huge thing in scaling our businesses. Anything that you can, you know, ascribe to somebody who actually has that expertise. In your lane. Right. And in then C-Suite Network, that trusted network, that's a big part of it. We yeah. know who everyone is, right? Yeah. So, so that, that's a huge thing to know who you're going to. So Lauren, no question, right? <laughs> um, in terms of value, I couldn't agree more. And this notion that old school approach of this is business, nothing personal is nonsense. The fact of the matter is when you're making that connective tissue with each other, when you really are building meaningful relationships in terms of the value you're adding, whether that's in from the perspective of actually caring that the person is healthy, like, like in today's day and age, you know, when you haven't heard from someone for a little while, you don't say, Hey, why haven't you spoken to me? Right. <laughs> You say, are you okay? Are you okay? Are you and okay? you mean it. Are you okay? Exactly. Because, oh my goodness, look what's happened. You know, <laughs> people go quiet when they're dealing with some really tough stuff going on in their lives. And a lot of people have been dealing with tough things with COVID, with their businesses, with their communities and their personal life. So, so, you know, that that's a little thing, but it can be so powerful, so meaningful to give people that grace, to, to, to give them that uh, level of uh, empathy. And you know, and, and care. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Exactly. And when we look at how we build really great, effective teams and effective team culture, there is absolutely caring there. It's not about one person being the star and beating the rest of the team or right. being the only ones that are successful and celebrated. Absolutely not. And, you know, we had this discussion uh, with our with our team recently where it came up. Well, this person doesn't understand because they're not on the sales team. And I said, wait a second. <laughs> let's be clear here in c-suite we are all part of the sales team the operations team and the customer service team that's you know? the e-myth that's michael gerber that's his story knowing everybody and being able to collaborate and help each other absolutely and and when you do that and genuinely care about where that's going to land for people and you're thinking to how to help them get there faster it is it, it's it's that uh the magic of the exponential potential and and that brings me to how do people join this wonderful organization that you run well, my email address is here. So Trisha, T-R-I-C-I-A at c-suite-network.com, C and then a dash. So more than welcome to reach out to me anytime. I love that. Um, and then and then also um, our c-suite-network.com, so c-suite-network.com uh, website. There you'll see join and you could certainly um, join us. We also have um, our Celebrates event. So if you're a vice president or above, an influencer, uh, a speaker, author, consultant, coach, investor, uh, you're more than welcome to join us and just see what this whole big, uh, crazy community uh, and family is all about. Yeah, and that's on Fridays at 5 Eastern. And if you didn't grab that, it will be in the show notes. You can also reach out to me because I'm part of this network and I'm going to be there tomorrow although this is not going to air by then, but maybe by the tomorrow that it does air, I'll be there too, hopefully. Trisha, thank you for joining us today at Investing Across Borders. It's great to have people that have actually been through the process, maybe not of investing, but certainly of crossing borders, of being a dual citizen, of having that visa initially and you know getting a green card, not in maybe the, the traditional way that I work with investors because I'm working with mostly people that are getting their visas through investment, but that initially was Trisha's visa. She had a business visa and worked for a company. And so just always remember that professional services cannot be underscored enough and value is at the end of the day, the most critical 
feature that you can have and somebody to hold your hand through the process like me. <laughs> and on that note, I'm Lauren Cohen, host of Investing Across Borders, international legal and real estate expert. And yes, I'm still licensed in my home province of Ontario. I will never give that up. I worked way too hard to get it. And uh, I would love to help you navigate your path to invest, live, work, and play across borders. Please subscribe to the podcast, Investing Across Borders, and I look forward to seeing you in your future endeavors. Trisha, I will see you very soon. Thank you. Thank you, Lauren.